Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to Sundance 2019. This is the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, is the director and the cast of Relive. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jacob, this is a Blumhouse affair? One of those Blumhouse pictures that terrifies people in the night and stuff? Uh, it's not a horror movie. No. No, it's, just, it's Blumhouse produced it. Right, and he's um, branching out. He's not just horror anymore. Yeah. He's doing superhero stuff and everything. Yeah. They, they produced Whiplash. Yeah. You know, they produced The Jinx for HBO. Mm -hmm. I think they have a wide range of ambitions. The movie's really stressful, um, but it's To make, not, or are you talking about no, watch? to watch. <laughs> it's, it's a stressful movie to watch, and there's, there's violence, and, and that sometimes maybe some people might be scared, but it's actually a movie about hope. And it's also a movie that's got some sci-fi elements. I'm like, oh, I don't want to spoil anything, yeah. but I, I, did I see the TT words, time travel, in there somewhere? Uh, it's, it's not exactly about time travel, but it's about two alternate uh, timelines that interact. Break down the story first real quick. Uh, more or less, uh, David plays a, a, a cop who's uh, a, a foremost uncle, a, a loving uncle to Storm and his brother, who's played by uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Mm -hmm is uh, sort of a ne'er-do-well drug dealer, a great guy, just screwing up sometimes. And then this irreconcilable thing happens where this trauma, where it seems by all the evidence that uh, uh, Brian Tyree's character has killed himself and his entire family. Mm. And um, uh, David's character is in the middle of a grieving process when the phone rings. And the call is from his niece, Ashley, played by Storm Reed here. And he doesn't even answer it at first. He just goes to the property room looking for it. And once he gets a hold of the phone, it rings again. His own phone rings again from the phone <laughs> that he's holding. Right. But no one's calling him from that phone. And um, he picks up the phone. and. It's his niece's voice, and he doesn't know if he's going insane or talking to a ghost. He doesn't know what to think. He doesn't even talk. He just listens to her voice until she gets frustrated and hangs up. <laughs> and I then mean, she calls again. <laughs> from, just from your telling of it, I'm gripped. So the movie must be damn good, man. This is your idea? You came up with this? Uh, more or less. There was a, a, a script by a guy named Drew Daywalt who wrote children's stories. Uh, that my ki I read to my kids right. called The Day the Crayons Quit. Yes, I know that yeah. book. And uh, he, he, he wrote this screenplay that had uh, this, these five pages uh, that w was about this family trauma, and this girl calls her uncle. And I, 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 I thought this is amazing. I was like lit up with hope that this, that this horror could be righted. And I went and did yoga. And I came back and I read the rest of the script and it turned into a traditional horror movie, which I wasn't really interested in doing, but I was really, really uh, moved by those first five pages. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll try to figure out how to iterate that idea mm. uh, into a whole movie. So uh, there was a collaboration in the sense that I, 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 I leapt off of that, he that initial fire, thing. He and, then, it and, and then And then I just took off and, and, and kept writing and kept writing and kept writing until we have the movie that we have. Third time at Sundance for you? You're a Sundance kid. Correct? Yeah, my first film was here in 2004. Mean Creek? Mean Creek. Right, yeah. and then you came back with... Um, uh, the details. Yes, with Toby yeah. and stuff. Yeah. What does this festival mean to, to you? It seems to have supported your entire career every step of the way. I mean, when I uh, was 22 or 23 and thinking about making my first film, uh, the dream was to get into Sundance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't to sell a film or to be uh, a big shot filmmaker or to make Transformers. Or it was just get to, if you could just get into Sundance, that would be the most amazing thing in the world. Uh, and when we submitted uh, Mean Creek, uh, I got a call right before Thanksgiving. I was driving to the Bay Area on Highway 5. Uh, and they told me the good news, and it was about a bunch of kids. So I pulled off, and I knew they'd be so excited, so I pulled off on the side of the road and called all these kids and got to tell them we're in Sundance, and it was the most exciting thing in the world. And, you know, uh, things have changed. Uh, my career has changed, and life has changed uh, since then, but it feels like this really nice uh, continuity in my life that I get to keep coming back here and celebrating films with my actors and my crew who's here, my producers who are here, and there's a whole community of people that are here that have been here from the very beginning. Mm. And 
Robert Redford is here still and his, his idea to have a place where people could celebrate film and, and have a lab to create film, it permeates this place. And, and no matter how commercial it gets or how big or important it gets, it's still that thing, it which is, is great. You've been here before, David, correct? You've been up to Sundance once, twice before? This is my second time. Second time. Um, first time was about six, seven years ago. I was here with a film called Middle of Nowhere. All right, very right. Now, um, I saw Gringo earlier this year. Well oh, done. Great. Thank last you. Year. Thank you. Well done. Uh, comedic turn there. This seems like a turn into, uh, would you call it suspense? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I describe it as a psychological thriller. Right. You know, what I loved about it when I first read it is how challenging keeping the timeline in the film was from a character arc point of view. You know, emotionally, this character is so fractured because in one sense, he's dealing with this huge loss, but in another sense, he has this hope that he doesn't know if that hope is warranted. And then also he has this love for his niece, which is driving everything. And so for me as an actor, I'm always looking for opportunities to scare myself with a level of challenge. And you know, when Jacob and I spoke, it became very evident that there is a good way for this to go. And if we get it wrong, a not so good way. And I loved the idea of jumping off the cliff with this idea, with this man and then when we um, met Storm and I read with Storm and I just saw this astounding talent I mean I remember you know the the first time we did a, a chemistry read with Storm and she left and we both just looked at each other speechless yeah. at the level of talent um, said, that oh, my god, oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god hardly you speechless know. just one thing over yeah, and over yeah, again yeah 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 Speechless, <laughs> as in one only two words. You're, you're going to cast her, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I was not in see that audition, but I did see Wrinkle in Time, which you were absolutely amazing in. Thank you. What was it like uh, joining up with these cats on their adventure? It was amazing to work with Mr. Jacob and Mr. David. And wait a second, did they insist you call them that? <laughs> no, that my mom weird. insists that I call people um, Mr. and Mrs. It's just a southern thing. It's proper. Thing. I like yes. it. That's nice. Well um, done. You can call me David. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Are you gonna, oh, she, oh she, she's gonna tell me. <laughs> call me Mr. David. Okay. Um, so uh, working with the two of them was amazing, and just to see their attention to detail and how much they love the craft um, and how much they cared about the projects. Cause you could do some projects and people do a great job, but you don't feel as though they put a lot of time into it or, or they really want it to be, not even be a success, but they just want to put 150% into it. So to see them do that made me do that as well. And mm. just to uh, learn some new things and do a genre of, of of a movie or, or yes, of, of creative art that I've never done before, it was really cool. And you guys, both of you are uh, graduates of the Ava DuVernay School, am I correct? <laughs> yes, Did you we, talk we, about we, that? We, we like, definitely share that in common. Mm -hmm. No, actually after, um, because you had, you had done Wrinkle, I think you had, had you done Wrinkle in Time? When I had were? done it, uh, yeah. I had just finished it. It hadn't That's come right. out yet, but I had just finished uh, filming it. That's right, and mm -hmm. so, you know, I had actually gone on set, mm -hmm. and I had met you yes. uh, briefly mm -hmm. on there, and I I'd had actually a chance to see Storm doing her thing, and I had been so impressed by her, and then, you know, I let Ava know that she was coming in, and then afterwards when she left, I did we the same thing. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> uh, you know, um, but yeah, we, we we share hair in common, and I know Ava is particularly excited and a little bit jealous of Jacob <laughs> at the fact that she has uh, he has both of us in a, in a movie. Mm -hmm. um, did I see you're doing an HBO thing with that yes. Drake's producing? Yes, that's so cool. I haven't met Drake yet, but I have. Soon. I don't want to rub it in. Okay. <laughs> yes. What is it? What is the show? It sounded really good. Yeah. So it's a, a, a teen drama on HBO called Euphoria, mm. um, and it stars in Day, and I play her little sister, and it's. Basically, a, a show that touches on things that teenagers go through. And it is a little racy, and it has some things that people might not want to see, but it's real life, and it, it is what teenagers go through, and I feel like it's a conversation that needs to be had. So I'm excited. I'm nervous for it to come out, but I'm very excited. Um, I never get the chance, very, I meet mean, very few people who have ever, ever interacted with Oprah. And when I meet her, I'll ask her, what was it like to work with Storm? But mm -hmm. now I'm talking to you, what was it like 
to work with Oprah. Did you take anything away from that experience? I did. Um, I, of course, people looking on the outside in say, oh my God, that's Oprah. So they're starstruck. And of course I was at first, but Working with her and getting to know her, like during rehearsals or even shooting, um, or the, just the small conversations we would have, she's just like a regular woman. And she, again, has so much love and passion for the craft. And she is just so down to earth and so humble. And I, I really just took a, well, she told me, don't waste energy on things you can't change in life when you could be using that energy on something else positive in your life. So that's like become my life mantra and just to be a good person and it will just really get you far, so. Did she give you a free car? I just assume that's a big part of the Oprah thing. You no. get a car, you get a car. <laughs> no. Um, but I'm not looking for a free car. I She's mean, I know her. To drive. Right. Good point. Good point. I just turned 15 and a half, so I could get my permit, but I don't need a car. <laughs> when you get that license, call Oprah. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you head into uh, a flick that's uh, going to play with elements of the unreal, Mean Creek, very real based. This is a movie that's kind of going to take a bit of a flight of fancy. Is there trepidation from somebody who starts? grounded and then you're like oh, I actually want to do what you can do in a movie which is make pretend and kind of leave the realms of reality um, well I thought about that uh, what I concluded was that I wanted to portray the unreality of this film and treat it with as much reality as I could right. um, as if that thing is really there <laughs> you know right. like I don't I, it, uh, the, the ghosts in, in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining are really there for Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. They're reacting like human beings in, a, in, in that situation. And, 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 and so to the extent that I even had to coach these guys into that kind of performance, uh, I actually don't think I, I had to even try. I think you guys just intuited that and knew that that's what we were doing because maybe there was a clue to that in the dialogue or something. Um, but we all just behaved as if he was really getting a phone call from the dead. Right. What would that be like? How, how, how would the wheels start spinning in, in, in a man's head at that point? And, and we drew little pictures of, of what that might look like in, in, in the script. <laughs> do you remember the picture we drew in your script? Yes, I do. There was like curly cues coming out of his brain. Like, <laughs> and, 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 That's and, your direction? They're like, here's a drawing, do <laughs> this. But I got it, though. I, I got it helps. Yeah. It. It's a good approach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you guys sit in this verified position of, uh, you've been Sundance multiple times. Have you ever been here before? No, this is my first time. This is time. your first time? What's yes. your impression of it? It's amazing just to be around so many people creative people that are uh, taking a risk to get their either documentary or movie or television television show out there for people to see is amazing and uh, to be in the snow. I don't get to see snow often, so I'm very excited to be here. It's a blessing. Speaking of snow, we got what we call a snow hat right here at the uh -huh. IMDb studio. <laughs> we uh, have questions in here. We ask you, pick out one of those questions and then everybody answer it and then we send you off into that cold weather. What do we got, Jacob? There's a history of Sundance stars and directors moving on to the Marvel Universe. Who would you like to play in the Marvel Comic Universe? Yes, Jacob, who would you like to play in the Marvel Comic Universe? We'll start with your actors. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I had an answer. You got go. one? I do, I have an answer. Oh my God, I thought you needed to go I ahead. Want, I want to play Superman because Superman is uh, an immigrant from another universe. He's alienated and he has to choose how to use his powers. I think he's the best superhero. That's my answer. I think you absolutely understand that character. Well done, sir. Yes, <laughs> I have, I, I, I always mix I up. I thought about that answer, so that's why I was so good. Are you, you yeah, already I, thought I, about it? I actually, he, Kevin gave me this. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> not I mean, man. You got a Filmmakers looking out for filmmakers, oh, man. The, the questions in there? Directors v. Actors. The wheels now just fell off of this whole thing. I'm kidding, he didn't. I, you see, I, I always mix up DC and Marvel. Doesn't matter, pick one. Okay. Oh, I, might have, okay. I mixed up DC, that's a DC. Okay. Comic okay. books, I, comic I, books. I, I, I Somewhere like, Marvel fans like, are crying, but I'm you're sorry. okay. Yeah, I like Batman. I, yes, you know, I, I think that's a very complex character. So yeah, I'll go for Batman. Oh man, um, I guess I, can I, I would play Storm. I mean, 
Oh my god, that <laughs> makes the most sense! It's like, yeah. you also got the question yeah. early. <laughs> no, I, I was like thinking about it, I was like, oh my god, what am I gonna say? But I think it would only be right for me to play Storm. Yes! So, and it also, would be rude and for it's you a great to title. not play Storm. Right, exactly. So yeah. convenient on set, man. Yes. They wouldn't have to like say your character name, or it's one and the same. You're right. already in character. Exactly. Yes. Method. Yes. Love it. Brilliant, man. <laughs> Give it up for the folks from Relive, everybody. Woo!